What's up everyone? It's Steven and guess what? I'm back again with another video. Now before I get into the video, I'm gonna ask you guys something. If you like these videos, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe because I got a lot of content lined up and it's just gonna be a good time. So anyways, back to what this video is about. In this video, I'm gonna give you my eight tips for headshot photography that'll allow you to take the best headshots possible. So a headshot is typically a portrait of a person, typically from the shoulders up. It's just showing their face, it's showing what they look like, it's showing them without trying to hide anything. If you've seen a headshot here and there, then you probably thought to yourself, man, this doesn't seem too difficult at all. But headshot photography does take a little bit of skill, and that's why these tips in this video are gonna help you take much better headshots. So on that note, let's get into it. Tip number one. Wear the right clothes. Typically when you're getting a headshot done or you're taking a headshot, it's usually for something that's professional, it's for a professional setting. And because of that, you wanna make sure that the subject is wearing the right clothing. You don't want a subject that's in a wife beater, you don't want a subject that's wearing something that just makes them look less professional than they could. You want them to look as professional as possible. Why should somebody looking at your headshot hire you if you don't even look the best you can in that headshot? It doesn't matter how good that picture is, if you're not looking as good as you possibly can, then they're automatically gonna judge you a little bit because you're not looking your best. When you're not looking your best, people are gonna easily not take you as seriously as they probably should. People are gonna judge you no matter what, but I'm a firm believer that when you wear the right clothing, they're not gonna judge you as much as they probably would if you're wearing clothing that you would wear in a casual setting, like say the gym or something. You can be the most qualified person for a role, but if somebody's looking at your headshot and you're not wearing the right clothing, they're gonna judge you, they're not gonna take you as serious, and your odds of getting that role decrease significantly. You don't wanna miss out on a good opportunity just because of the clothes that you're wearing. So before you take a good headshot, make sure your subject's wearing the right clothing. That way, their headshot is automatically gonna look a little bit better. My second tip is to keep a close eye on the lighting. You need to make sure that the lighting is as good as it can possibly get. When it comes to photography, lighting is always gonna be one of the most important aspects no matter what. Taking headshots is no exception to this rule. When you're taking a headshot, you wanna make sure there are as few shadows as possible on their face. That's what a headshot's for anyway. You wanna show off the person's face. So when you have shadows on that person's face, you're hiding some important details that could be on that face, and that's not something you wanna do. And what's the best way to get rid of shadows on a face for a picture? Lighting. Have good lighting, and you're never gonna have to worry about shadows anywhere on the face. Remember, clarity in your headshots is gonna be one of the most important aspects. And the best way to get the most clear picture is to have the best lighting you possibly can. My third tip for getting a good headshot is to make sure that you have proper camera settings. When you have proper settings for your camera, you're not gonna have as many problems when you take that initial photo. And when you have fewer problems, you're not gonna have to worry about as much work in the editing process. However, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the exact settings that you should have on your camera for a headshot. Every headshot is probably gonna require different camera settings, and that's mostly because it's gonna depend on the setting you're in, your location. So because of that, no two headshots in different locations are gonna require the same exact camera settings. The camera settings I can tell you that you need to be most aware of are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. These are three basic camera settings that every photographer should know about, and they're all connected in a way where if you change one, you should probably adjust one of the others so that you can have the best possible photo that you're looking for. When it comes to headshots, you wanna make sure that your subject is definitely standing out from the rest of the photo. And because of that, you wanna make sure you have a wide aperture or a very low f-stop so that you can have the subject be very clear and the background behind them extremely blurry. When you're doing this, you're separating the background from the subject, thus the subject is gonna stand out that much more. When it comes to shutter speed, I would say have a very high shutter speed so that just in case your subject moves around a little bit, your photo's not gonna have any kind of motion blur. Motion blur is something that can really ruin a photo, so having a higher shutter speed is gonna help eliminate that problem altogether. When it comes to your ISO, I would say adjust that accordingly based on what your aperture and shutter speed are. Once you have all three of those settings working in sync together, you're gonna have a good headshot in the end. My fourth tip is to make sure that your subject makes silly faces. Now I know that sounds a bit weird, but for a lot of people, standing in front of a camera can be an extremely uncomfortable 
experience. It's something that not a lot of people do on a regular basis. So being in front of a camera, having somebody take your photo, that could be very nerve wracking. So because of that, I think a good way to make sure that you get your subject comfortable is to just ask them to make some silly faces. When they're making silly faces, they're probably gonna loosen up naturally. And when you have a subject that's loose and less nervous, you're more than likely gonna have a better photo in the end. You're gonna be able to tell the difference between a relaxed subject and a subject that's very nervous in their photos. So what better way to get a person to relax than to have them make silly faces? If anything, this is gonna at least cause a few laughs for you and the subject. And in turn, that's still gonna make them become less nervous anyway. So when you really think about it, making silly faces is just a win-win situation for everyone. Now your subject still may be a little nervous, but I guarantee they won't be nearly as nervous as they were when you first put the camera on them. Another reason why I think it's good to have your subject make silly faces is because it gives you time to make sure that your camera settings are right. You're basically killing two birds with one stone. You're making sure your subject is relaxed and you're making sure that you have the camera settings where you need them to be so that you don't mess up any of your photos. My fifth tip for having a good headshot photo is to make sure your subject is sitting, at least at the beginning anyway. In my experience, having a subject that's sitting is gonna make them be much more relaxed than a subject that's standing. Again, not everyone is gonna be extremely comfortable in front of a camera, especially if this is their first time getting a headshot done. And because of that, I recommend that you have your subject sitting down at first. When you have your subject sitting naturally, you're probably gonna be much more relaxed than you would be if you were standing. If you're trying to take a picture of somebody that's standing and they're already nervous, you're gonna be able to tell that Standing is probably gonna make them a little more nervous. At least when they're sitting, they're not gonna have to do nearly as much with their body while you're taking a photo. After a little bit, they'll probably become more relaxed, and when they become more relaxed, you can tell them to stand up, and when they stand up, they're not gonna be nearly as nervous as they were when you first started to take their picture. Taking headshots is all about making sure the subject is comfortable, so having them sit down is gonna be the best starting point, but if they feel comfortable standing up, let them stand up and express themselves a little bit more. Now tip number six when it comes to taking a good headshot photo is to work with different poses. You don't wanna keep working with the same photo over and over and over and over again. Work with different poses is gonna allow you to show off the subject a little more. It's gonna show that they have a bit more range with whatever they're trying to do. And in the end, it's gonna make things a lot less boring. Think about it, if your subject is trying to make a portfolio of headshots, they're gonna need multiple photos. If you take the same photo over and over and over again, they're only gonna have one good photo in there. So if you work with different poses, your subject's gonna be able to have a portfolio that's much more extensive than the one great photo that you're gonna take of them. And along with different poses, you should work with different angles as well. Working with different angles also shows off a different side of the subject, and that's something that they might need for their headshots. So don't be scared to mix things up a little bit when it comes to these headshot photos. You don't wanna have the same photo over and over and over again. You wanna be diverse and you wanna show off the subject the best way you can. My seventh tip for taking good headshot photos is to encourage the subject. You wanna be your subject's biggest hype man during the time that you're taking their photos. This is not only gonna make them more comfortable, but it's also gonna allow you to take much better photos of them because you can see the confidence bursting out of their face. You can just tell when a subject is lacking confidence. Yes, that's hard to deal with sometimes, which is why encouraging your subject is only gonna help them that much more. When you encourage your subject, they're gonna have even that little bit of confidence boost that they might need to help you get the best headshot that you can. Confidence comes through in photos. So when you see that confidence come out while you're taking those photos, you know you're gonna have a great headshot somewhere in your camera. So do what you can to give your subject that supermodel confidence so that you can probably get those supermodel photos. My eighth and final tip for getting the best possible headshots is patience. You need to make sure that you stay as patient as possible. Not every subject you work with is gonna be the same. Some are gonna be much easier to work with than others. Others are gonna be extremely difficult to work with. And because of that, you need to make sure you stay as patient as possible. You're not always gonna get the best shot you can at first, but you need to keep going at it so that eventually you hopefully get all the shots that not only you wanna get, but the subject needs as well. Trust me, I know more than anyone that if you're not getting the results you want right away, you can easily get frustrated with that. However, I've found that when you take a step back, take a deep breath, relax, stay patient, 
things will work out in the end. Things will eventually come together and you'll get exactly what you had in your mind at the beginning. I guarantee all the good shots you need will come through if you stay patient. So follow these eight tips and I guarantee that your headshot photography and probably your overall photography will get better. You'll start to see significant improvements almost immediately. Don't follow these tips and you'll probably be doomed and stuck with mediocre headshots forever. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And while you're here, leave a comment. Say anything you want. Leave a comment about what your favorite lens is to use when you're taking a headshot. But until next time, uh, I, got, I gotta go try and get some headshots done. You know, I'm trying to get discovered, so I kinda need to take my own advice on this one. And yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm Steven. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.